All right, so today I'm going to show you how to add sharpening to a photo using a high pass filter. Whenever I do filters, I, or yeah, filters of any kind, I always try to use them in the most non destructive way possible. And that's why I really like the high pass filter because it is a very non destructive way of doing things. Um, Photoshop, of course, there, there are a million ways to do everything. So this is really just one of many, many options. Okay, so I'm going to quick open up a photo. <clears throat> this is actually my one of my nephews. I took pictures of him last fall for his graduation photos. And of course, he waited till the very last second, so we kind of had to improvise and figure out something to do around his house. So this is just standing in the stairwell. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to take a drink before I lose my voice. All right, so to do a high-pass filter, we need to make a new layer, and we are going to merge into that layer, and I'm going to label it, because I always label my layers high-pass. Okay, and then we're going to go up, oh wait, missed an important step. I'm going to right-click and click on Convert Smart Object. And here's a little icon that tells you it's a smart object. And I will explain why I did that in a minute. Now we're going to go to Filters, Other, High Pass. <clears throat> I can't, no, let's see. You can slide it around and you're going to see kind of the different extremes in High Pass. I usually stick with around 12 as kind of my jumping off point. Click OK, and then we are going to go and convert in the mode into soft light. And there you can see that does a lot of sharpening. Okay. Now, whenever I do add sharpening to a photograph, which is pretty much any photograph, is going to need at least a little bit. However, not every photograph means it done over the whole image. In fact, I try to avoid sharpening an entire image whenever possible. And I will usually put on a mask and fill it with black. And then using my brush tool and white, I will go in and brush in sharpening where I think it's necessary. Primarily meaning the eyes and occasionally I will bring opacity down and do a little bit on the lips as well. Um, sometimes if I think it's really necessary, I will highlight around the face a little bit. But the point of sharpening is not to take the place of your camera. I mean, it is still fundamentally important that you need to make sure that things are foc in focus when you're taking the picture. I can't take the place of the camera. I mean, I can't fix what is information isn't there, I suppose you could say. Um, but a little bit of very well-placed sharpening can help draw a viewer into the image and the most important parts of the image, which are usually the eyes. Okay, so there you have just a nice hint of sharpening. Now, here is why I turned it into a smart layer, or smart object, sorry. Whenever you do sharpening, um, say that I looked at this and went, yeah, it is too much. Well, instead of having to scrap the whole layer and start over, because it's a smart object, all I have to do is click on this little doodly bob, and there it is. So whenever I do any sort of anything from the filter menu, I always convert it into a smart object first, and then add the filter. This way I can always go back and change it however I deem necessary. Okay. And then one last thing about sharpening, no matter what um, type of sharpening you decide to use, or you know, I use, I guess, it's always got to be the very last layer on the very top. Don't ever use sharpening and then go add new layers and do other stuff. Um, you always want the, layer, the sharpening layer to be on the top, and, you always, and whenever I am working on a photograph, sharpening is the last thing I do right before I save. Always the last thing. <clears throat> so, I guess that is my two cents on sharpening using high pass filter. I hope you'll tune in next week. I'm not really sure yet what I'm going to do for next week, but 
I'm sure it'll be very exciting. So, have a good day.